Special thanks to Battle Pants for suggesting this video and daring to ask the question, can you beat Fallout 4 as a synth? Rules for this run are simple. I can only use Institute weapons. That's it. Those are the rules. Also, as you can tell, I installed a mod to turn myself into a synth. The issue with that is in the opening scene where you're frozen, it gets really buggy and you're just stuck in there. So I had to install an alternative start mod in order to actually play. With all that said, let's jump into the run. I created my character, named myself Hugh Man, and assigned my special points. I went 5 in Strength, 2 in Perception, 5 in Endurance, 1 in Charisma, 1 in Intelligence because the Idiot Savant perk is the only way to level up, 8 in Agility, and 6 in Luck. For the purposes of this run, I chose not to pick a trait, but if I use this mod again, I think I might do that. Let me know in the comments if you think that's cheating or not. I chose to start up with no gear right next to Vault 111 so I can get as close to the vanilla start as possible. After starting, I slipped into something a bit more comfortable and the run can now officially begin. I walked into Vault 111 and picked up the necessary items to make my character invested just enough with the main story to find the Institute. That's one thing to be careful about when you use this mod. You can soft lock out of the story if you never get into Vault 111. And at least when I tried it, the door won't open after a certain point. This video would have been out a lot sooner if I knew that little fact. Anyway, I found the real protagonist face down and eaten by roaches. And since I already opened the blast door and have a pit boy, I didn't have to lock them behind a door to leave. My first stop after leaving the vault was Cambridge Police Station so I can do the Archjet mission. This was the only way I thought to get synth weapons and a ludicrous amount of ammo. So the synth boys were off to Archjet to kill more robots. And yes, you best believe I let Dance fight the synths in the test site for 10 minutes so I could go and get an obscene amount of ammo. There's no reason not to do this especially since the Institute weapons burn through ammo like crazy. With the laser musket in my previous Fallout 4 challenge, I had to be very intentional with my shots. Here, I can just spray and pray. You'll see the amount of ammo that I get from doing this wasn't actually all that much. Anyway, after that, I was off to Diamond City. Mayor McDonough and I did a secret synth handshake. You son of a bitch. And I was graciously led into the city. Continuing my quest to talk to all the synths apparently, I went to talk to Ellie to find Nick Valentine. On my way out, I gave Kyle a bonk in the head and entered Park Street Station. To the surprise of literally no one, suits are an awful defense against blue laser beams. I vaporized Dino and rescued my fellow synthetic brother. The rest of the vault and the fight with Skinny Malone was pretty much par for the course since at this level the Institute weapons are a good deal stronger than what you would usually have coming into this part of the story. I told Nick I'd meet him at Diamond City and upon arrival I had this interaction with Myrna. Ma'am. You? I don't know you. Just keep your distance. One state of updated impression coming up. Good. Good. Now just to answer me one simple question. Are you human? because I will not serve a synth. Human as the day I was born. Well, you do look human enough, but I'll be watching you. I have eyes like a, well, they're good eyes, got it? Ah yes, she does have really good eyes. And then Nick and I had to break into Frosted Mini Wheat's house. You know the drill. Get the key the all-American way, bribery, push the red button, and shove a cigar in your dog's snout. We made our way over to Fort Hagen and I told Nick to frig off while me and the dog went to kill Fruit Loops. Fighting the synths and laser turrets was a grand old time since I would at least replenish any ammo I used up. The fight with Raisin Bran wasn't really the quick and easy one or two shot kills that I was kind of hoping for, but that's fine. We got the job done anyway took out his brain, and watched what our future would have looked like if the Hindenburg didn't explode. I was having issues with my recording software, so I don't actually have the footage of me going back to Diamond City, talking to Nick, and lying to Piper about giving her an interview. You'll just have to take me at my word on that one. For your viewing pleasure, here's me taking Finn's head off with a laser. Now that's pretty cool, right? 
Anyway, I entered Chris Pick's mind and completely ignored the, oh, we forgot to develop this character, so we're trying to make you feel bad about killing this guy we forced you to kill before we had a chance to get to know him section and learned that I needed to find Virgil, who's apparently still in hell. That's a divine comedy reference for my fellow history and literature nerds. Anyway, one of the great things about this mod is the fact that I don't take any radiation from the air at all. So I could just run through the glowing sea with no issues whatsoever. I talked to the mutant who told me I had to hunt down a fellow synth. I used the shock baton for most of the green tech gunners because I can. I didn't really spec into melee, but I just wanted to conserve ammo. The fight with the blade reference was pretty much the same as Kellogg, so there really isn't much to talk about. I executed the rest of the gunners and attempted to free the synth. I couldn't figure out how to open the door, so I just elected to kill her so at least she wouldn't be stuck in a cage forever. Back in the memory den, I learned I had to find the railroad. And here was when I decided that I definitely was not joining the railroad. Instead, I thought it would be a lot funnier if I joined the Brotherhood of Steel. So I did just that. I mean, they already have one synth working for them, so what's one more? Dant and I went up to the Pridwin, and I was sent to Fort Strong. After that, I built the teleporter and got into the Institute. One great side effect of this mod is the fact that Sean is given synth eyes. It is equal parts hilarious and terrifying. I convinced my least favorite Fallout 3 character to come back and work for the Brotherhood by breaking into a rundown part of the Institute. I had a heart attack the first time I attempted this because I had never done this mission before and the Assaultron just chilling in the storage rooms came out of nowhere. I picked up the MacGuffin and convinced Madison Lee to come back to the Brotherhood. Then I got to work on my favorite character from Fallout 3. After some fetch quest, I found out that Dance was a synth. True to Brotherhood ideals, I was sent to deal with the monstrosity. I killed him because there can only be one secret synth in the Brotherhood. Then I was given a chance to finish what I started with the railroad. I already took out Glory, so the rest of the unnamed railroad agents were easy enough to kill. I did notice, however, I think they have maybe three character models as railroad agents. Kind of broke my immersion a bit. I say as a modded synth fighting alongside the Brotherhood of Steel who is in the Commonwealth specifically to kill synths. Then I was off to get the beryllium agitator with Fallout 4's version of Lieutenant Dan. Magic likes. This was pretty easy. Hell, the fight with the sentry bot was kinda easy since it can't fit through the doorway in the decontamination chamber. The assault tron on the other hand, yeah that took a second try. But in the end, I got what I came for, and the Iron Giant was fully operational. I followed Superman over to the CIT ruins, and just like in Fallout 3, the enemies trying in vain to hurt Liberty Prime didn't hurt me much. The fucking giant robot that throws nukes like footballs nearly killed me twice. I love Liberty Prime. I really do. Is it really emblematic of Bethesda's take on the series? For better or for worse, yeah. But if I shut off my lore-loving brain for a second and turn on my monkey brain, that's a big robot that throws nukes at smaller robots and says that communism is death. That's objectively cool. Anyway, I'm just stalling here a bit because the walkover is super drawn out for no reason at all. Nothing really of note happened during the fight in the Institute, except for the fact that the synth gorillas are easily the toughest enemy here. After that, I may or may not have committed a war crime by executing Institute scientists that were clearly running away, but to be fair, there's a bigger war crime coming later on. I was told that I needed to get a password from Sean's computer, and I got spooked a bit getting there because he was standing up instead of in his bed, so I shot him a bunch to make sure he wouldn't stand again. I attached the pulse detonator, left Robo Sean to die because synths are an abomination, got teleported again, pushed the pretty button to commit my last war crime of the day, and proved yes, you can beat Fallout 4 as a synth. Again, huge thanks to Battle Pants for suggesting this video. This run not only was a lot of fun, but it was the first time that I installed mods on PC, so this was a very fun learning experience. 
I pushed back the release of this video a little bit because I was working out the kinks, but now I can actually attempt the modded challenges that I've had my eye on. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Let me know any challenges you'd like to see in the future. This has been Red Handed Gaming. Stay safe and God bless.